In this video we are going to talk about last things Michael Jackson did before he died. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. It was the never-ending return. The king of pop, Michael Jackson, was finally ready to recover his throne with a series of sold-out concerts. It was going to be a spectacle to remember, a show that would shift the spotlight away from his odd lifestyle and back to his music and inventiveness, which had made him one of the world's most well-known figures. Thriller by Michael Jackson has sold 66 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling album of all time. Jackson was battling an addiction to prescription narcotics, racked with self-doubt, and heavily in debt as he prepared for his 50-show comeback tour, This Is It, at London's newly opened O2 Arena in 2009. Jackson's final days were spent rehearsing and preparing for the spotlight as he battled his inner demons, with his much-anticipated homecoming fast approaching. Jackson died at the age of 50 on June 25, 2009, less than three weeks before the premiere of This Is It, after suffering cardiac arrest in his rented Los Angeles home. A coroner's report released in early 2010 found that the cause of death was acute propofol intoxication. Propofol, also known as Diprovan, is a type of anesthetic and sedative used in medical treatments. Jackson's personal physician allegedly gave him the medication to help him sleep at night. Jackson's behavior got erratic as he prepared for the tour. This is it was made to prove to the public, who had been fed a steady diet of media-driven reports about Jackson's frequently odd personal life for decades, that he still had what it took to entertain. And the money would help him pay off his increasing debt, estimated to be around $400 million at the time, incurred as a result of his extravagant spending habits and diminishing income. Jackson had composed new songs and was preparing for This Is It, an arena show that had reportedly cost $25 million in pre-production. Jackson's unpredictable conduct intensified as the tour's opening night approached, despite the efforts of teams of personnel all over the world. Jackson was described as paranoid, trembling from chills, and repeating himself by This Is It cosmetics and hairstylist Karen Faye during his final days, when he was emotionally frail and physically thin. In 2013, Faye testified for Jackson's mother, Catherine, and his children in their wrongful death claim against AEG Liv, the promoter of the This Is It event. In an earlier meeting with Jackson in April 2009, Faye described him as quite enthusiastic, although on the thin side. Everything had altered by June. Faye testified, he was not the man I knew. He was behaving in a way that I didn't recognize. According to Faye, Jackson was quite stoic but frightened during a practice in mid-June. Why can't I choose, he kept repeating, adding that she had never seen him so gaunt, Faye added. Prior to his death, Jackson was said to have weighed over 130 pounds and stood almost 6 feet tall. Faye was part of a working group assembled from Jackson's background, including manager Frank Dilio, show director Kenny Ortega, choreographer Travis Payne, and entertainment lawyer John Branca, among others. On June 23, 2009, in Los Angeles, California, Michael Jackson rehearses for his upcoming gigs in London at the Staples Center. On June 23, 2009, only two days before his death, Michael Jackson was practicing for the tour. Jackson's trainer, Conrad Murray, was charged with getting him in shape for the tour. Dr. Conrad Murray, Jackson's personal physician, was introduced to the singer in 2006 when Murray treated one of Jackson's children in Las Vegas. Murray was hired as Jackson's exclusive personal physician for the tour by AEG Live in May 2009, yet AEG later claimed there was never a contract with Murray. Murray's role was to make sure the performer was in good shape for the tour. According to Faye's evidence, by the time Jackson was in rehearsals in 2009, he had been treated for chronic pain for decades. The singer had been burned on the head while filming a Pepsi commercial in 1984, and later sustained a back injury when a bridge hung over the stage he was standing on collapsed during a concert in Munich, Germany. Jackson had difficulty sleeping as well, particularly after his tour performances. Jackson is said to have used a lot of Xanax or Propofol to help him sleep at night. In 2007, a Beverly Hills pharmacy filed a complaint against Jackson, alleging that he had not paid a $101,926 prescription medicine bill dating back to 2005. According to court filings, a former staffer at Jackson's house claimed the singer took 30 to 40 Xanax pills per night as part of an investigation into child molestation claims against him for which he was acquitted in 2005. Following Jackson's death, Murray revealed to police that he had given the singer propofol injections to help him sleep in the weeks leading up to the premiere of This Is It. On Murray's advice, Jackson skipped the following day's session after a bad rehearsal on June 13, 2009. AEG put Murray in charge of getting Jackson to rehearsals, according to Ortega's testimony in the 2013 wrongful death litigation against AEG Live. For the second week in a row, Jackson was absent. 
Ortega claimed that when Jackson returned to rehearsals on June 19, he appeared lost, cold, and terrified, and that the show director was split between stopping the production and not wanting to hurt Michael's heart. Ortega wrote to AEG Live executives in a series of emails that Jackson was exhibiting signs of paranoia, anxiety, and obsessive disorder-like behavior, and that a psychiatrist be sent in to assess the star. On June 20, Ortega testified at a meeting at Jackson's home that Murray believed Jackson was physically and emotionally capable of handling all of his obligations as a performer, and that Murray should be the only one making such judgments. Jackson was in good spirits for the last dress rehearsal just two days before his death. On June 23, Jackson returned to rehearsals as a completely different person. Ortega stated, I was pleased at his vitality, his state of mind, and his passion. Murray later told investigators that he had stopped using propofol to put Jackson to sleep for the previous two nights. During the trial, a sleep specialist testified that strong users of the drug can recover swiftly. On June 24, about 7 p.m., Jackson left his home and headed to the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles for his final rehearsal. Many in attendance remembered the singer as still looking terrific while rehearsing rehearsing the act, which included hits including Smooth Criminal, Billy Jean, and Thriller. Jackson hugged his dancers and praised the crew as the practice came to a close at midnight. Jackson arrived at his home and was greeted by a small gathering of supporters who had gathered outside. Michael Jackson's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which was dedicated to his memory after his death on June 25, 2009. On the day of Michael Jackson's death, June 25, 2009, his star was placed on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Jackson apparently began to unravel after rehearsal, pleading for propofol. Jackson began to complain of exhaustion later that evening. Murray was present, and according to a police document, he was concerned that Jackson was hooked to propofol and instead gave him Valium to help him sleep. Murray claimed that he gave Jackson more sedatives during the night, but no propofol fall, despite the singer's persistent requests. On June 25, mid-morning, Murray went into Jackson's demand for the medicine, adding propofol to the singer's intravenous drip. Murray was with Jackson for 10 minutes before heading for the bathroom, according to his police interview on June 27. Jackson was not breathing when Murray returned less than two minutes later. Murray, as well as paramedics who arrived quickly, attempted to resuscitate Jackson. Jackson was transported to UCLA Medical Center, where a team of doctors attempted resuscitation but were unsuccessful, and he was pronounced dead. The king of pop has passed away. Murray was found guilty of manslaughter on his own volition. Jackson left behind three children, Michael Joseph Prince Jackson Jr., Paris Michael Catherine Jackson, and Prince Michael Blanket Jackson II, in addition to an unrivaled musical legacy. Dr. Conrad Murray was charged with voluntary manslaughter in Jackson's death and sentenced to two years in prison out of a four-year sentence. In the wrongful death claim brought by Jackson's mother and children, a jury found AEG Live not guilty. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.